it gonna, it's gonna work for you? Yeah. Okay. Because this, because this just, I'm saying, this is dangling right here. Just. Yeah. Well, I just can't get it. Works for me. Why don't you plug that in and let that run for about twice and see if you can have it? Yeah, this one? Yeah. Church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a bright day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts, and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Announcements. Uh, I've heard new. Every Wednesday, Project 36 Bible study at 7 p.m. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 through 7. Keep reading. Stay up. It says VBS June 10th. Where's the text? No. No. Uh, Super Summer Week 3, July. Uh, Kids Cafe, volunteers for the week from the 20th through the 24th. Back to that. And we're having breakfast. Yeah, we also got an anniversary. Dale's. Yep.
there anybody that would need to put on that? Any others? We'll take these four away. Lord, thank you for uh, allowing us to be here today. Lord, I ask that you put your hands upon Marla. And for what the situation she's going through, the stress, the pressures. Put your hand upon her as well. Guide the doctors. The direction she goes to treat her. Lord, thank you for uh, putting your hand upon her as pregnant. Lord, thank you for uh, giving him uh, better health. Lord, I ask, thank you for uh, scriptures, procedures.
Thank you. Maybe seated. Technology is great until it doesn't work, right? Uh, yours truly. Um, <clears throat> tend to forget. I had to set up the. Uh, the ratios and all that, I had that set up for, for a different screen. I just plugged the songs in here and didn't set it up for, for us. So that, that's on me. So um, <clears throat> Next week it'll be fixed. I promise. Okay. <clears throat> a couple of things before we get into the message this morning. Uh, just want to thank the church for their prayers and, and uh, allowing us to go to Texas, take care of business. Um, What can you say? It's one of those things you, you don't really enjoy doing. You enjoy seeing family and, and that type of thing. But um, under the circumstances, things things went well. We're back. We're tired, as, as you can imagine. But uh, just just thank you, church. Just just appreciate it. <clears throat> Open your Bibles, if you will, to First Corinthians. Chapter 11, primarily we're going to deal with verses 23 through 28 this morning, but uh, I want us to understand something. We often go right into the Lord's table, and we don't talk about who are these guys that were sitting around the table. Well, yeah, they're the apostles and, and disciples or how, whoever you want to call we know that, but who are they? I think it's important for us to take time once in a while to step back and examine who are these guys sitting around the table. So let's just jump right in here. There are some who say that these are just ignorant fishermen, ignorant, unlearned, or whatever. That's an assumption. And when you make that assumption, what happens when you assume? Okay? We all know that phrase. Okay? This is one of those cases. These guys just weren't, they just weren't stupid, dumb fishermen. These guys went, okay? Seven of these guys went to the Capernaum synagogue schools when there's no better schools in Galilee. I asked our uh, superintendent, who is the best academic school in the state of Kansas? Okay. And he gave me the Blue Valley District School District. So imagine, if you will, okay, attending that particular school district and going into life. Now, education is what it used to be. I understand that. But you and I both know Okay, what you learn in high school, okay, that's the foundation of what you learn in your learning process for the rest of your life. These guys weren't stupid. These guys just weren't, oh, I'm just a fisherman throwing a net out. No. These guys, okay, <clears throat> these guys were laymen. And when it says that they were unlearned okay, and ignorant fishermen, 
What they're referring to is they were unlearned in the, in, in the lore of the rabbis. Okay? They were, <coughs> excuse me, they were untrained in the methodology. How would we uh, say that today? Um, they didn't go to the, to the cemeteries, I mean the seminaries. Okay? Doesn't mean they didn't know their stuff. In fact, I, I would make the case that these guys probably knew more about scriptures than you and I do. Granted, they didn't have the New Testament. Okay. However, these guys, they just weren't by just throwing, throwing nets out there and, and drawing fishing. They knew what Jesus was talking about. And yet, as we mentioned in Sunday school, and yet, they didn't make that connection that Jesus was who? The Messiah. Okay, that he had to come and die. What are you talking about? We got all this training behind us and we're not making... Well, I can honestly say, um, guys, and I'm talking to the fishermen now, talking to the disciples, guys, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. Because you're truly... Okay. has a complete scripture here and I struggle sometimes to say this is, this is who Jesus is this is what he's done for us so let's just jump right in let's talk about Andrew Andrew he was age 33 He was kind of the administrator, a good organ, uh, you know, organizer, but he was a better administrator. And he was one that, uh, one of those all around, even tempered, uh, self made, successful uh, men of just modest affairs. Okay. Now, does that sound like an ignorant fisherman? No. Okay. Then we jump on to Simon Peter. One of my favorite guys, okay, a man of impulse, okay, optimist. Now, he was a fluent speaker, eloquent and dramatic, natural leadership, quick thinker, but not necessarily a deep reasoner, okay. Okay, he, he can operate on the, on the fly, you know, he could give you the answers, he could do this all on his feet and all that, but at times... And we all understand this. Distressingly vacillating. Okay, would swing from one extreme to the other. And yet, we look at Peter as kind of the, the leader of the disciples. Now, would you follow a guy like Simon Peter? How about James Zebedee? This guy was age 30. He was one of the sons of thunder. Why is that? Why, why would Jesus say, okay, we're going to just use the sons of thunder? Why? Well, him and his brother, who was his brother? John, okay. Once in a while, they would do what brothers do. they just butt heads, okay? And who was it now that, okay, let's leave this village. They don't believe you, Lord. What do they want to do? They wanted to call fire from heaven. Okay, just get rid of these knuckleheads. Whoa, that's kind of harsh. Youngest of the twelve. John was. <laughs> I 
Here is John, the youngest of the twelve, dependable, prompt, courteous, all those good traits outlived the others. He lived to be what? 101 years old. He is the guy that wrote John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and wrote the book of Revelation. Well, he was in exile at Patton. Do you know they tried to kill this guy by boiling him in oil? Didn't work. It's like, now what? All right, just go about your way and promise to be good. Okay. In Ephesus okay, is where, where he's buried. Now, how about Philip? You look at Philip, age 27, methodically, okay, methodical reliability. He wasn't a good public speaker, but he was very persuasive and, excess, and exceptional, okay, and successful personal work. He's not going to be the guy to get up front and, and talk about this, okay? But he's going to be the guy that could sit beside you, okay, over a cup of coffee and explain God's word to you. Not easily discouraged. He's kind of a plotter, uh, tenacious, just in, in everything he took. Just we all have those people in our life. Okay, they're not for the limelight. Okay, but you can count on. You can count on and say, okay, who do I need to do this job, get it done well? Okay. Let's give it to Philip. Let's look at Nathaniel. Nathaniel, okay, he's age 25, okay? Honest to a fault, with sincerity. You know anybody like that? In your circle of friends, do you have that one person, okay, that the comment is made, okay, don't ask them unless you really want to know the truth. They're not being spirited about it, but they'll let you know. Remember what Nathaniel said? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He was honest. He wasn't pulling his punches. Now, Nathaniel, okay, took care of, of the families of the twelve. Now, now, we haven't in our... How shall I say this? We have it in our hallmark thinking. Hallmark, you know, cards. Okay, that everything's right here. Okay. That's where we get the three wise men to show up at Christmas time. They did, okay. But the Hallmark card said it does, so that's where we draw our theology from. Okay. Well, let's set that aside a minute. Okay. When these guys went on the road, their families were with them. Somebody's got to take care of the family. Okay. Somebody's got to say, hey, Peter, your wife's sick. Okay, okay. Um, I'll go and, and he makes provision. Takes care of the family. Let's look at let's look at Matthew. Matthew Levi. Age thirty one. Tax collector looked upon his own people as a traitor, and he looked looked by the Romans as a mercenary willing to sell out his own people. I'm not thinking we're going to vote him in, just for popularity. This one. But his strong point was wholehearted devotion. And he indeed was a publican. Just, just the average Joe. Nobody special. 
And the fact that Matthew was one of the 12 gives me hope. Okay? That the kingdom is open to downhearted and outcast souls. Look at Thomas. Thomas was age 29. He was a twin, but he lost his sister at the age of nine. Okay. Parents never got along, and this carried over into his adult life. The reason Thomas was the way Thomas was, okay, is because of his upbringing, because of his lifestyle, because mom and dad didn't get along. Now we see that in our society. More than we care to admit. Why is this child having problems? Okay. Because mom and dad can't get along. Mom and dad just tosses them to the wind. On and on and on. This is part of the reason okay, that Thomas said, look, I ain't going to believe anything until it's right here. Until I can touch it. Oh, by the way, uh, most of us aren't any different. We're not going to believe it either, unless superb analytical mind, coupled with unflinching courage, but that quarrelsome and disagreeable personality. Now, as said, okay, now I've heard this before from my lovely wife. I've heard this before. Thomas' wife was excited, okay, to send him with the group. In those moments of Dan and Mary's life, I've heard this more often than I care to admit, because Dan gets ornery, he gets sideways with Mary, and she goes, you haven't got a cruise you can go on for six months? Now, I know no, no other married couple in, in, in the room ha has that issue, okay? I'm just using myself as an example. But what are we learning so far? We're learning that these are people. These are everyday people. You have James and, 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 and Judas, okay? Not Judas Iscariot, but these guys were twins, okay? <coughs> They were just common fishermen and understood very little about the philosophical and, and uh, excuse me, <coughs> and theological matters. They served as the chief ushers, if you will. Okay, do I have do I have them up there? There we go. Now, remember. Remember where all the crowds came? Okay. These guys were the ushers. These are the all-around servant and, and just errand boys for, for the rest of the 12. And, and, and if you needed something, hey, we need whatever it is. These two guys can, can go and, and fetch and make it happen. They weren't the brainiac. But they're there trying to run an event without crowd, crowd control. Simon the Zealot. <coughs> Age 28, inspirational loyalty. Now, every group has to have somebody, that's in, okay, welfare and rec is what we call it in the Navy. Somebody's got a playtime, diversion, okay? All work and, and no play makes what? 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this guy was in charge of finding ways to relax. Ways, ways to do that. He had a great weakness for material things. And he still wanted the Roman government to be overthrown. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the zealots are the guys okay, who would go and say, okay, it'd be, a, it'd be an analogy, and these are the guys who would be packing daggers, waiting for an opportunity to take over. A Jewish nationalist. Now, unfortunately, some of our churches have been... Well, we won't go there. You know what I'm saying. Last and not least, Judas Iscariot. I wonder, he's age 30, I wonder if his parents being Sadducees had anything to do with it. Wasn't there, don't know. Okay. But it's like, oh. Arguably the best educated man among the 12. Why is it the smart guy is always the problem child? I don't know. That's not fair. But he became an increasingly a brooder, just over personal disappointment, finally became a victim of resentment. Okay. But yet, but yet, who was the treasurer of the group? Look, you, you don't trust the money. Okay, it gets to some crumb bump. You're going, wait a minute. This guy had the disciples fooled. Jesus knew. But the rest of the disciples are going, what's going on? And yet Jesus warned him many times about his slipping relationship with himself. As God. Now, we've said all that. Why? Why is that so important? See, Jesus is not afraid to identify with businessmen, laborers, optimists, pessimists, philosophers, skeptics, politicians, who, and, and patriots. Why is this so important this morning? I'll tell you why it's so important. It's so important because it indicates to me there's a room at the table for me. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your mama does, who your daddy is. It doesn't matter. Jesus says, come one, come all. Jesus says, this is my body, which is Broken for you. Gentlemen, if you'll come and prepare the table for us, please. Bodhi, you, you and Law want to do that for me, too? <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 11.23, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night he betrayed, took bread, and when he took he gave him thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this and remember it to me. Ma, would you pray over the bread? This is my it's for you. Do this. And remember it's for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant. In my blood, do this whenever you drink it and remember it of me. What do you think of that?
This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Today, I just wanted us to understand that the followers of Jesus Christ are people just like you and me. We have a tendency to put them up on a pedestal. And as we see by some of their biographical stuff, these guys were just you and me. I challenge you to live your life for Jesus Christ within the personality, within who you are, within who He made you to be. Let's not try to put our airs into you. Let's not try to be something that we're not. Because we have a Savior who died for people like me. People like you. Stand with me. They all are going to ask you to close this out. Thank you, God bless you.